Well, hello, and welcome back to another scary, scary episode of Borderline Texas Trash. I am your host, Stephen LeBooth, and I got some skelly, skelly stuff for you today, boys and girls. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. <coughs> How the heck is everybody doing? It's me, your good old friend Stephen Booth, here to tell you some more scary stories. Well, how, how is everybody? I am doing awesome. Sorry I'm late again, uh, but I'm here. Anyways, just want to say thank you guys for being loyal listeners. Thank you for listen, listening to the show. I appreciate it. Uh, we all do, man. We all do. Oh. Anyways, I just want to say thank you, guys. The show's growing, and I just want to say thank you. Keep telling everybody about it for me, if you don't mind. And if you don't mind, leave me a four- or five-star review, if you don't mind. And please leave a comment, man. That way it lets uh, everybody know about the show. Well, all right. I got that out of the way. Now... We're going to get into some scary stuff. Since it's uh, summertime, school's out, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell, like, camp stories, like urban legends, stuff like that. So, I think it'll be pretty cool. But I got uh first couple uh, shows we'll do, excuse me on this, I got something from every state. So, we'll be covering that for a while. I hope you're ready, guys. Oh. Well, you know the routine. Find you a nice warm blankie. Go snuggle up by the fire. Get you some nice coffee. Or some cocoa. Or some tea. Sit down and relax. And get ready for the show. Or you or get ready to be scared. <laughs> All right. Here we go. All right, our first story takes us to Alabama. And in 1883, a, a Connecticut native named Charles R.S. Boeington moved to Mobile, Alabama, where he began rooming with another man of a local boarding house, at a local boarding house. Not long after that, Boyington's roommate was discovered dead of a stab wound in the uh, local cemetery. And Boyington was the prime suspect. Despite the fact that there was no to little evidence to convict him and that he never <coughs> excuse me, wavered his uh, innocence, Boeington was found guilty and sentenced to hang. Before he went to the gallows, Boeington proclaimed that an oak tree would grow from his heart and prove his innocence. Sure enough, an oak tree grew over his grave. Later, two people convinced to, convinced to murdering his roommate. Oh! Okay, it says uh, later, like years later, two uh, people confessed to murdering his roommate. The tree is still around today, and it is said that whispers and crying can be heard coming from and around it. Honorably mentioned to Hanging Mo uh, Molly, a giant seven-foot-tall woman clad in all black, who is said to approach kids out in Advil, Alabama. After dark, she hugs them tight and screams directly into their ears. They'll teach them to listen to mom and dad. Well, that was a pretty cool story. We had one about a guy that was conv or convinced, convinced, 
a guy that was found guilty of a murder he didn't do, and then an oak tree grew in its place. And then down the street, there's a lady in black that will grab your kids and scream in their ear. That's pretty cool. All right. Y'all ready for the next one? Yeah, these are kind of shorties. All right. Now we're going to travel to Alaska. In 1938, a Fairbanks resident residents were... For failing the mammoth tusk Otto Quest had acquired as part of his many explorations for the University of Alaska in Fairbanks. In, in desperate attempts to save at least one of the tusk, Guest and his students took as many as 30 of the tusk and buried them somewhere in the area. Or maybe, as other versions of the story have it, Gensett was actually experimenting or experimenting in preservation of the tusk. Either way, he apparently did not make a note of where the uh, tusk were. And since everyone involved in the burial is long dead, the lo the, lo the, lo the location of the tusk has been lost to time. That's the legend anyway. Multiple sources over the decades. Both. Through. Uh, both through arch archives. In the field. Have unearthed. Had unearthed. Some tantalizing clues, but so far, no tusk. Which, if found, could be worth up to one million dollars, depending on their condition. So, if you ever know where the buried tusk are in, Al in uh, Alaska, they're worth a million dollars, baby. Alright, our next little story... Our next story takes us to Arkansas. Legend has it that travelers traveling or driving on Highway 365 in central Arkansas around Halloween sometimes encounter a young girl in a torn white dress. And when they offer her or they offer her to drive her home, things get really weird really fast. Once the girl is in the car, the driver drapes their coat over her shivering shoulders and sets, it, sets off to the address she gives them. But when they get there, she vanishes into thin air. Puzzled, the driver knocks on the door of the house and the woman who answers tells the uh, driver something like, that, my, or, that girl is my daughter. Who died many years ago? She hitchhike, hitchhike, shit, la. She hit, hitchhikes, anyways, hitchhikes back home around this time every year. For some, for some reason, for some reason, perhaps to check if the story is indeed true. The driver goes to the cemetery to see her tombstone, where they find her, where they find their jacket draped over the young girl's grave. Ah. The vanish, the vanishing hitchhiker, is an ex, is an example of an urban legend that is really traveled. In Hawaii, the hitchhiker takes form of a uh, Pele the goddess of fire and volcano who is said to appear as an old woman walking along the road. She gladly accepts a ride and then vanishes from the back seat. In Pennsylvania, the hitchhiker is a man in white who is once again disappears from the car when they reach their destination. In some places, the hitchhiker is Combined with another urban legend like La 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 Lura, 
the spirit of a weeping woman who cries because she drowned her children. And, and in Utah, the tale is combined with Mormon religion. Three Nephitite virgins of the vanishing hitchhiker of the vanishing hitchhiker tale involving a car go back to the 1930s but accounts including okay but accounts including carriages horses and even two people simply take a stroll sometimes date back as far as 1876 and appear in places as far as as far as Russia and Ukraine. <clears throat> now, this urban legend, I I think there's one in every state. Because Texas, I know we have one here. And uh, I think that's around, um, I think it's, a, I want to say it's Lake Worth. is where the one in Texas is. But I'm not for sure. I know it's a lake in the Metroplex. And, of course, it's the uh, Lady in White. Uh, But I didn't know that story was that popular in that many states. And that's pretty cool how dates of the hitchhikers kind of go back sometimes to even later. All right, let's go to California now. All right, California. In, in his 1938 story, Flight, John Steinbeck wrote when, when they're comes it to high mount when it comes to high mountains if through cyst any of the dark watching men go not near them nor try to speak to them the dark watching men the grapes of wrath arthur re, uh, referred are in a urban legend that has long spooked people traveling through california california's santa lusa mountains Hitchhikers traveling the area when the sun is setting have reported seeing the 10-foot-tall sloth of creatures wearing long capes and, a, and tall hats and seem to be watching them. There are claims of a variety of levels. Or wait, there are claims of varying levels of... Are, there are tales of various stories that local Indonesian tribes spoke of them in the Spanish uh, conquist, uh, the Spanish conquistadors dumped them, dubbed them as Los Valentes or excuse me Los Valentes Oscuros, the Dark Watchers. Explanations run with the uh, gamut. From Hologens to Pertolandas to hikers' own shadows, regardless, visitors to the Santa Luis Mountains might want to keep Steinbeck's word in mind. No one, or what do you say? No one who knew, no one who knew the watchers were near where they lived. But it was better to ignore them and never to show interest in them. All right, remember that if you're out, if you're ever around them mountains, I think I've covered the mountains before, and they're pretty creepy. You know, when I researched them, we're gonna go to Colorado now. All right, the Colorado Colorado's Riverdale Road doesn't sound like a place you want to find want to find yourself anytime soon. It's apparently host to a phantom jogger who taps on car windows as well as demon dogs and demon children. A phantom Camaro with a busted headlight that challenges other drivers to a death race. And for good measures, the gates of hell. There's also a phantom woman in white. Of course, there's always got to be a woman in white. The phantom woman in white who is said to be connected to tragedy in 1975 
in which a mansion on the road was burned down by a crazed man with his entire family inside. The man supposedly vanished near the ruins and you can apparently still hear the screams of his family. Research of his cast out on whether or not anyone is actually inside the uh, mansion at the time of the 1975 fire. But you might want to avoid the route on Google Maps anyway. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, and, and too, wherever y'all live, y'all can always email me. Y'all's like, local legends and stories y'all have around y'all's local town. I'll talk about them. All right, we're going to travel to Connecticut. Perhaps you've heard of the melon heads, small cannibalistic humanoidal creatures with oversized heads said to roam lonely roads in Ohio, Michigan, and Connecticut. These strange creatures aren't Connecticut, aren't Connecticut's only, uh, Cryptid, the Winston Win uh, Wild Man, is the co uh, constant state answer to uh, Bigfoot. So basically, they're saying the Win the Winstead Wild Man is basically their version of the Bigfoot. In his first purport, oh, it was first reported in the newspaper reports in the early 1900s. When apparently, when apparently a cost an accost man picking berries slipped on a slipped on lo, on a local's porch and spooked passengers of a coach who uh, spotted him on the road. Someone who encountered the uh, wild man's first first hand said that the man's hair was like black hung down long on his shoulders, and his body was thick, covered with black hair. The man was remarkably, remarkably ugly, and to all appearances was muscular. A brawny man, a man against whom any ordinary man would stand little. The sightings have been blamed on everything from a gorilla that escaped a traveling circus to a hoax by a local editor who needed to sell newspapers. The Winstead Wild Man was apparently spotted as recently in the night as the nineteen seventies. Huh. Alright, so if you guys are up in that neck of the woods, tell me a story about the melonhead kids and the wild man. Now we're gonna go to Delaware. If you're not okay. If you're not, oh, if you're not, if you are out on a boat on the waters of Delaware's Cape Henlop, Henlope, Henlopen, Cape Henlopen, Henlopen State Park at night, you might think, you might think the blinking light you're seeing is a lighthouse, but you might be wrong. There's no lighthouse there. Instead, there is a ghostly corpse light that, according to legend, is meant to lure British ships to their doom. It's said that hundreds of years ago, British, British soldiers railed in, uh, in an Indian winding cemetery, killing most of the tribe. So they found some Indians, some in, indigenous people, and they wiped out the uh, tribe. British soldiers raped in an, uh, oh, oh, okay, okay, British soldiers, uh, they didn't rape, they, <laughs> I take that back, British soldiers raided an Indian, uh, Indian wedding ceremony, killing most of the tribe, those who survived cursed the land, creating the corpse light, the first victim was supposedly the Dunfersh Dunfershman in 1655. 
the ghostly former caretaker of a graveyard had a cat like had cat like features in his life and uh, and still watches over the grounds in his death according to legend he cases rowdy teen chases rowdy teenagers out of the cemetery and if you knock three times on the ceiling if you want me sorry i couldn't resist and if you knock three times on the rear on the rare cemetery wall hell he'll mess with your car so don't do that either so basically in delaware they have the light at cape holland pond that is a uh, light they say from the uh, indians that were there because they was having a wedding ceremony and these british pe the british raided it and wiped out the tribe and all that and the uh, indians there cussed the uh, land and then you had this guy that's one at the end that was the uh, caretaker of the graveyard and he still does it in his death so go check that cemetery out see if he'll chase you now let's go to florida <coughs> Perhaps you've heard the urban legend that after Walt Disney died in December of 1966, his body was uh, by a lot, or it was frozen and stored somewhere on the grounds of Disney World, possibly under the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. This urban legend is so per perverse that it actually launched another urban legend. In 2021, rumors began circulating on Facebook that Disney, that Disney, that Disney's body would be thawed out that December in an attempt to uh, resurgence him. Both of these tall tales are impos impossible <coughs> because Disney wasn't frozen. He was buried in uh, Glendale, California. Forest Lawn Memorial Park after his death. But they're not the only Disney-related urban legends. Shortly after Space Mountain opened in 19, 1975, rumors began circulating about the ride. Somewhere, some were referencing a mysterious tragedy. Others were quite specifically saying that a rider had stood up on the ride and been decapitated. Disney officials tried to crack down the uh, source of the rumor, but they were never, never able to. There was apparently one minor incident on Space Mountain in those early days. Some cars bumped together and the ride was shut down for a few weeks, but no one was decapitated. Di Disney officials said it's not even possible to stand up while you're riding the ride. You know, I went there for my, uh, we went to Florida for our class trip, our senior trip, and we went to Space Mountain, and we heard the same rumors. But I don't see, you couldn't stand up riding a ride. All right, let's go to Georgia. Up until a few years ago, people in Augusta, Georgia, had a beware of a 10-foot-tall pillar on 5th and Broad Street that was said to be cursed. Legend has it that after an... Huh. After an evangelist was uh, forbidden from preaching there, an evangelist, that's a uh, preacher, basically. He threatened that a great wind would destroy the place except for one pillar and that and that whoever tried to remove the pillar or yeah whoever tr tried to remove its remaining pillar would be uh, struck dead in the words of your oh what is it? okay it says in parentheses in the words of your your book of the city council of Augusta Georgia 1977 Soon a storm or a tornado did just that. Supposedly, several attempts to remove the pillar ended with people dying horrific ways. Eventually, it was said that anyone would 
Okay, it was said that anyone in that it is said that anyone who so much as touched the pillar would meet an extremely in an extremely bad end. The pillar got the pillar got a taste of its own medicine in 2016 when it was destroyed by a vehicle collision for the uh, third time. It hasn't been rebuilt, though. Apparently, a stump which locals are still very uh, weary of, rem of removing it. So, if you guys are ever in Georgia, let me know about that story. You guys tell me about it. <laughs> There's a, a lot of uh, curses and stuff like that through the years that people have said, oh, it happened because of a curse. So, apparently, they wouldn't let him preach that's evangelist. They wouldn't let him preach there, and uh, he cursed it and said there would be that one pillar standing, and that's what happened. All right, now we're going to go to Hawaii. Morgan's Corner on Nua Nupalai Drive on Oahu is supposedly haunted, at, and it actually was the site of the real-life murder. In 1948, two men escaped from a prison and murdered a widow, a widow in her bed. Morgan's Corner is also said to be near the site of an urban legend that many of your that many of you might recognize. Here's how usually the story here's how the story usually goes. A boy and a girl are parked under a tree at Morgan's Corner late one night, but when the time comes to head home, the car would not start. So the boy leaves to go get help. Despite the fact that the girl does not want to be left alone, she hears all kinds of strange noises like thumping and scratching on the roof. And she's so scared that, she's, that she hides on the floor of the car until morning. The police eventually arrive and take her out of the car, warning her not to look back. When she does, she sees her boyfriend hanging from the tree, Toes scraping the roof of the car. Wow. See, now I've heard that one, <clears throat> but I've heard the different versions too. But it, it's always kind of the same thing, but I've heard that story before. It's crazy how these stories go from state to state. <laughs> and the vanishing, vanishing hitchhiker, Barnvod, says that this particular tale which was popular among teens, was first collected in 1964 from a student at the University of Kansas. In some versions, versions of the story, the boyfriend has actually been de de uh, decapitated and is hanging upside down instead of his toes scraping the uh, roof. See, I've heard that too of him hanging upside down in his hands, you know, scraping the roof as he goes back and forth. The girl hears the drip, drip, drip of his blood on the roof all night long. And when the police come there, she turns back to see his, see her dead boyfriend. Her dead boyfriend, her hair turns white. The tail is so, no, I'm just kidding. The tale is so apparently related to the other. Older urban legends you might uh, be familiar with is the hook. See, that's another one. There's always, uh, I call them your uh, make-out stories. Not because you're making out, because usually uh, it's a couple and they're at the local place where the teens park and make out or whatever, you know. It's always that, you know, it's always that, that place where they hang out, you know, where, you know, Lover's Lane, ain't that what they used to call it? Anyways, let's get on to Idaho and Ida Pimp. All right, Idaho's Payate Lake is said to be the home of the, uh, or said to be home of the Nessie, like water creature known as Shirley. But that urban legend is child's play compared to the Water Babies of uh, Massacre Rock, 
near Pacataloa, Idaho. According to to legend, there was once a terrible famine in the area, and some members of a local Native American tribes obtained to drown their infants rather than let them starve. In the timest version of the legend, you're, you merely hear these babies crying when you sit near the water. But in others, these babies actually survived by, cro- by growing gills. Supposedly, they still linger under the water searching for people. So if you're ever on Idaho, watch out for them babies they had to drown. So that's a crazy urban legend. An Indian tribe was a... Uh, starving basically and didn't want their kids to starve to death so they drowned them and people say you can hear their cries when you go to the river pretty creepy okay Illinois you might (coughs) remember you might remember homie the clown in living color But for Chicago kids in the 1990s, he was the boogeyman. In 1991, kids in neighborhoods across the city reported a man dressed as homie, as homie, trying to lure them into a vehicle, which was variously described as a red, white, and brown and blue van with the words ha ha written on the side with candy and cash. Police took the reports uh, mostly seriously with an officer telling the press if you're a clown going to work you're gonna get stopped the Chicago Tribune noted that the reports which came mostly from kids were tumbling out from different parts of the city like clowns falling out of the vo- uh, Volkswagen things the thanks to the dis- desperation in the uh, reports Police theorized that there might have been one or more phony homies, homies, the clowns, roaming the streets. According to the tribute, no real homie was ever uh, apprehended. <coughs> yeah, I, I heard that's where they get, that's where they got the story from. In Living Color was Homie the Clown. What they got it from that urban legend is what I hear. I'm not for sure, though. I don't know, so don't hold that to me. All right, now we're going to be in Indiana. Not all urban legends have the doom and gloom. Take the one surrounding Indian's iconic car race. Oh, Indiana's iconic car race. The The Indy 500. According to one urban legend, a tourist driving through town got caught up in the race traffic and ended up in the race infield. According to another, a rabbit on the track means good luck for the racers. If you are looking for a creepy urban legend, though, feel free to read up on the the House of the Blue Lights, in which uh, millionaire Skiles Edwards Test was said to have kept his dead wife encased in a glass coffin Surrounded by the lights of his house, or surrounded by blue light by blue lights in his house. So, if you guys are from Indiana and y'all have heard this, please tell me about it. I've never heard that urban legend. <clears throat> now we're gonna go to Iowa. In 2016, emails and fake book, Facebook posts began popping up in the Ames, Iowa area warning women drivers to beware of stopping should they see what appeared to be a body in the road. The post went a little something like this. Hmm. A bizarre panic in uh, spelling mistake, very much original. Warning women, a co-worker was driving back from Amos, and saw something laying in the road. As she got closer to closer, she noticed it was a body. She kept uh, kept uh, going on, calling nine one one. 
The officer called her back later and said that she was lucky she did not stop because there was two other guys waiting in the ditch to mug her. I also had a man try and flag me down between Boney and Ogden. So if this so if this happens to you, don't stop and then call nine one one. They are also using dolls and car seats to get people to stop. Repost this to warn others. This is real. Iowa people reported from a friend, which KCCI News Tonight. Dang it. The Amos Police Department took on took to Facebook <coughs> to let residents know that this warning was actually an urban legend that might have originated in South Africa in the 1990s. Where was I? We encourage you to call in suspicious suspicious activity and use common sense when things don't seem right. All right, now we're going to go to Kansas. Going to go, here we go, Kansas. Stoll Cemetery in Stoll, Kansas is famously home to the gate, to the to a gateway to hell. But the state has plenty of urban legends, like the Hamburger Man of Hitchison, Kansas. Mm, excuse me. This tells about the Hamburger Man's first popped up in the 1950s when hitchhikers started to go missing in an area known locally as Hamburger Hill. It said that Hamburger Man was a former turned serial a farmer turned serial killer who had been disinfused in a fire. These days he's a uh, He's half ghost and half monster. Either way, he prob he proudly nabs his victims, drags them back to his cabin deep in the woods, and grinds them into hamburger meat. I'll have to remember some of these stories. All right, Kentucky. Kentucky's Sleepy Hollow Road is a two-mile long, therefore said to be haunted by ghost by ghostly hearse that materializes out of thin air and then aggressively tailgates drivers trying to force them off the road and into a ravine so don't go well <coughs> when you're in Kentucky please watch out for this crazy bastard all right let's go to Louisiana The Roga the Roga the Roga the Roga 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 isn't the only cryptid prowling around Louisiana swamps. This state is also home to the cr Crunch or the Grunch the Grunch. What okay, what the Grunch is is exactly is unclear. Some say it's a goat like monster while others claim it's a group of half-man creatures. The name comes from the Crunch Road, which, according to legends, was a swamp was a swamp road that w was a swamp road that has since been paved over. The Grunch, however, it may be is said to haunt those who park near its namesake road. If you are seeing an injured goat wandering around the bayou, don't stop. That's how the grunch lures its victims. Help, I'm a hurt goat. Help me. All right, let's go to Maine. A monument to... Oh, a monument to Colonel Jonathan Buck founder of Buck Sports in Maine, features an odd stain. According to the local legend, it is the mark of a woman he sentenced to death. 
Some versions of this say he w- that she was a witch, while others claim she was pregnant with a with his child. Either way, Buck had her killed. In some ver- some versions, the war- in some versions, the woman somehow lost her leg before dying, and a leg shaped water stain now permanently is on the town's monument. So. Maybe if you're a person like that, you shouldn't be mean. So when they make statues of you, it don't keep haunted. Yeah, that is kind of crazy, though. Stuff like that. You know, when people uh, put a curse on people or stuff like that. All right, I think I'm going to do one more. We're going to go to Maryland. The winter of 19, The winter of 1967 was rough in Maryland. Crops failed, livestock died, and people perished from the flu. But as the story goes, instead of blaming the weather or a stroke of pure luck, the townspeople pointed fingers at Molly Dyer. A former oh, a former servant. She was an elderly woman, often spotted begging in for going around the fridges of society. The people decided she was a witch and was to blame for all the misfortunes of their town and had that their town had recently suffered through. Shortly after Dreyer was driven out of town, her body was found frozen to a boulder. It is said her handprint remained on the rock long after her corpse was removed and that Anyone who touches the stone falls ill. People have suggested that Dreyer inspired the Blair Witch Project. I'll have to remember that. I'll have to remember that and look it up too. (laughs) All right, I'll finish there and we'll start back there next week, my friends. Once again, I'm sorry I'm late for this, but... Glad you guys are here. Sorry if my reading sometimes sucks and I sound like a fucking three-year-old. But I'm doing it. But I hope you guys like the little urban legends. That's what I'm going to be doing this summer. So be ready. But until then, my friends, we'll see you later. And be scary.